In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to maybe set up the process of making a snake or maybe a train or something like that. And it's uh, fairly straightforward to do. I, I would make a full example, but I prefer to spend my time doing animations, kind of like uh, in real time in the game engine, as you can see in my new uh, in integral calculus uh, playlist that's on my YouTube channel. So and that'll give or my uh, tanks and lasers that are in there as well. You might, you know, aliens, things like that. But this case, this is pretty cool. And if I had time, I would make a really cool snake, but I'm busy doing other things right now. But let me just give you an idea. This is just the basics of it. I'll just run the animation real quick and you'll just see it just, it's this little thing that cruises around here and moves up. So you might imagine that could become a snake somehow. And with a little extra effort, it could be. So what we'll do is we'll go through the setup of it real quick because there's not a lot to it, believe it or not. Since I have this display window turned off, I can see that I'm going to need to turn this back on down here. All right, so now we see all the elements within the scene. And then I'll show you the relevant parts of it. I'll move the, this thing out of the way. Now notice what's in the scene initially is a curve. I'll highlight the curve right there. So it's a 3D curve and it's a Bezier curve. So if I was to click here and press Shift A, I go up here and get a Bezier curve like that. And it's actually oriented easiest to lay down in the on the Z axis, I mean from above. So if I wanted to work on it, for instance, I might move it over here like this and move it down to the surface. Press seven and then five. Whoops, seven, five. And that way I see the curve from here. I'll press the period on my number pad and there it is. I'll go into edit mode and there's the point of the curve. I grab that point of it there, press E, and I get another piece of the curve like this. And if I rotate it, then I can also take that and move it up into 3D space. All right, so that's how I was able to form the curve. All right, that just gives you an idea. And you all might be familiar with that. Well, a lot of you probably are, as a matter of fact. So. I'll back into perspective mode. So basically what I did is I made the curve to kind of look like the appearance of a snake. You, perhaps a snake is going to coil like this. But the important point is when you make the curve, make sure that you don't have any piece of the curve like this. You don't want it to overlap on another piece like that. Otherwise, it'll get confused when you do this next step in the process. All right, to actually make the curve effect, Believe it or not, let me move the uh, snake on back down here, and I'll zoom out a little bit. You, know, you start seeing over here, it looks like a straight line. So let me go back into, I'll go into the modifiers, into the curve modifier. And notice here, I have a curve modifier applied, but I'm going to unapply it. I'm just going to close it. It's not applied, as a matter of fact. So I'm just going to close it. and. Oops, let me close that. That's what I want to close right there. The curve modifier associated with this object. And the object is nothing more than this rectangular section that's, let me look in it close, and it's subdivided pretty good. Like this. All right, but this is actually not a good way to subdivide it. This is just so you, you can see it's subdivided like this. The better way to have subdivided, in fact, maybe we'll do that. We'll... We'll just gamble and get rid of it. Now notice where it's placed in the scene. It's directly in the center of where that is, and that plays a part. So yeah, let's just get rid of it and see if we can do it again. So we'll put a cursor here, shift A, add a cube to the scene. I'll scale it, you know, pretty far down. So it's like this, and then I'm gonna scale it way up on X. SX. Like this. All right, so he's down there a little bit further in the scene. Move him back into the light just a little bit. All right, I could get another light, but it's okay for the moment. And then I'm just going to scale the whole thing down just a little bit. In, as far as subdividing it, let's subdivide it a little bit better. Go into edit mode, look at it. And the other one had, you know, maybe subdivisions here and there. But in this case, we'll use press the T key, get our loop cut, and slide. Come over here. Let's see if it's going to find it. Oh, there it is. And then I'm use the wheel mouse. I'm going to just cut the daylights out of it. Okay, so there we go. So we have a lot more cuts along there like that. All right, so now that we have it in the scene, then I'm going to go back here to the curve modifier, add modifier curve. And then the name of the curve is Bezier curve. That's the curve. So for this, I want to apply the Bezier curve. 
and there it is like this. So you know what you do when you're in there, let's go a little bit closer. He's not directly over it, but let's move this here. In fact, I'll look at it from up above. So he's pretty close, so about like that, can't quite tell. And it only affects it on the one. If you move it on, say, the y-axis, it doesn't quite do what we want. So and if you do it on the z-axis, it doesn't do anything like this. So it's just on the one axis, in this case, it's going to be x. And when I move it along the x-axis, if you um, believe it or not, I'll pr do it from here with gx, it'll follow that curve. And you can see it's a little bit smoother, but I do have some inconsistencies in here. Oh, and I know why. It appears that, let's see if we can just scale this right here. S, Shift X. I just scaled it down. Okay, and then let me look at it from here. GX. So I'm either, okay, so let's just do this let's get rid of it for a second let's see where he's, it's actually low so he's offset in the scene that's one of the problems right there i think it is let's see g5 that looks a little more like it i'll move it on i'll just move it down to the side like this now let's try it add the modifier again add another curve to it pick the bezier curve oh that's looking more like it i'm going to press gx from over here Oh, that might be it. Let's see. And get out of ortho mode. Well, I have a little bit of a kink in there. So it's either the either the object's too big, or uh, part of my curve is too tight for... It might be the curve's just too tight for that object right there. I'm just going to try and scale it down. Let me see. I'm just going to try and scale it a little bit more. S, Shift, X. Oh, it's still crossing it right there, somewhere where it's kinking. So something is either not moving it. Let me see if I move it on, the, on Y a little bit. Somewhere between those guys. It's kinking it right there. It's almost almost have it there and let me see it let me it's all well, maybe it's on Z oh oh no that's no, below the scene somewhere right in there yeah there we go all right so I think you get the idea and so you know the more segments you have and of course you could put shading on it and textures and the whole nine yards and make this round instead of square and then you're on your way to creating all kinds of things and you could make a train out of the same thing just by you know having broken segments all rejoined together with uh, spaces in between all right well that's it for this lesson and i'll see you in the next lesson